Mama, go ahead. Hello, hello everyone. Hello, good evening. Thank you for joining today's show on Ocha Kitchen. Um, today's topic is dignity of labor. Dignity of labor is the philosophy that all types of jobs are respected equally and no occupation is considered superior or and none of the jobs should be discriminated on any basis, regardless of whether one's occupation involves physical work or mental labor, it is held that no, but no job, all job deserves respect. And that brings us to the topic of the day. Um, in our midst, we have a gentleman who has done well for himself, Engineer Chooks Mama Junior. He will be talking to us um, in the middle of the show. So going straight to the first question. Do you agree that our work, our job, give our lives a sense of purpose, meaning, and status? Or is it a tedious necessity? Um, IJ, I know you're never serious. Tell me, what do you think? Um... How do I put it? For most people, yes, they have purpose and meaning. For most people, it's all about paying, uh, paying bills. So um, I know like growing up in Nigeria, you just want to do, everybody was like, I want to be a doctor, I want to be this, I want to be this, I want to be that. But when you migrate to a foreign country, you find out that at times your, how would I put it? Your goals in life change. You have to figure out how to pay the bills and everything. So you end up um, doing something else in life. And most times you um, finally enjoy what you're doing and, you know, continue doing it. Like a lot of immigrant um, Nigerians or foreigners, like immigrants, they come here and they go into nursing. And they find out most people, I've seen my friends tell me, oh gosh, I love nursing, I love doing wounds, I love doing, I'm like, how can you like doing wounds? But they find joy in doing it. So, um, but meanwhile, they were like accountants or lawyers or, you know, doctors in, you know, so yes, it is, you can, um, it, it, give, it gives your life a sense of purpose. For some, it's about status. Some people want to uh, be something, be like, choose a career because of the status it's going to give them which I don't blame them. So, you know, so whatever floats your boat. So, so when once there's a deviation from the intended career, it becomes tedious, a tedious necessity. Yes. Yeah. Rather than yeah. That. I see, so, I see quotes, I see quotes. Um, I don't know how to like, I'm not going to put it exactly, but the quote goes like this, that um, there's nothing like making money from your hobby. You know what I mean? Like when you like reading and you can read and make money off of it, it gives you joy because you you, you enjoy reading anyway and everything. So yeah. Yeah. So but for most of us, going to work is tedious. So. Yeah. You know, okay. Thank and, yeah. yeah, thank you. Um I know we have um I think actually Junior, do you have anything to say? Junior, 
Can we put you on there? Yeah, I'm here, I'm here. Now, did you hear the question? Do you think, do you agree that our job gives us a sense of livelihood, a sense of um, fulfillment or rather joy? Simply, simply put, joy. Or is it seen as a tedious necessity? Um, yeah, j just to... Junior, can we see you, please? Oh, sorry. You're a, you're a special guest, so. <laughs> sorry. Okay, sorry. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, um, hello, everyone. Um, so, yes, I, I do feel like, um, obviously, if you're in a career that you're quite passionate about exactly. and it's something that you've grown up, you know, I'm dreaming about. So once you achieve it, it gives you a sense of um, um, purpose, a sense of achievement, and you really enjoy, you know, your job. So uh, in that respect, so the only time people don't enjoy what they do is probably maybe if they've just done it for the sake of it. Like, I mean, you, you would hear yeah. stories of, yeah. of people who go into careers because because of family pressures or what yes. society has expected yeah. them to do. Mm -hmm. So in that respect, I think um, the, the fulfillment might not come. So that's why you have people who have studied and let's say they have a passion for music and they go back and do music, you know? Yes. So it, and they are yeah, lawyers and doctors, yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So I feel like, um, yes, it, 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 you can get that sense of um, fulfillment and purpose if it is something you are passionate about. But if you're not, then I feel like it, yeah, yeah it, okay. you might not get that. Thank you. So there are two ways to it. Um, can yeah. we have Bertrand, are you there? Ben Ben. Benson, are you there? Okay, while well, we wait for him. OJ. OJ, can we have your thoughts on this, please? Is she awake? This one, she's blinking her eyes like, like baby books. I'm, I'm awake. Yeah. Um, All right. Okay. What's your view on that? What do you think? Yes, I. For some people, you know, it's neither here nor there. There are people who their work is all they know. No, okay. Yes. They are so career oriented that even their spouses dare not say otherwise. Because you know that if you stop this woman from going to this job, she'll become miserable. Mm -hmm. Okay. There are people who are like that. On the other hand, there are those who are working two, three jobs just for the money, not because they're enjoying it. The alarm goes <laughs> off, they drag themselves up, you know, mm -hmm. and go to do the job. So it's a vicious cycle and mm -hmm. it's a tedious necessity. If these people that enjoy their jobs, they're just a minority. Exactly. The majority are those doing it for the bills. Mm -hmm. That sense of fulfillment, it doesn't come easy. It's yeah. very few people that have job satisfaction. Very few. Very few, yeah. So those, those few are the few who are in the job that they love. Yeah, some, some, ha, fine. Inside those people, the, that's yeah. minority. You have those who have the jobs they love and you have yeah. those who the jobs are so well-paying yeah but they don't mind doing it it still doesn't mean they love it very true and that's why i jealous this generation because they make so much money just sitting home being in front of the camera i'm talking i mean they're doing what they enjoy just TikTok talking talking dancing you know saying mm -hmm. things and they make so mm -hmm. much money their, yeah. their generation is lucky they are because they are at the brink now we'll, we'll, we'll come to that each other that you that Okay, can we hear from an older generation? Um, we've got mommy, we've got daddy here who want to talk to us about hey. it. Um, daddy, you have to stop saying daddy and mommy, Mr. and Mrs. Wherever, Mr. Wherever, you have to be official. Mr. Wherever, daddy, like put, put respect on that name. Okay, is, is, is Mr. <laughs> Paul there? You're mute. Yes, I, yeah, yeah, Mr. Paul is there. I'm sorry, dad. Dad. That I can't give any opinion now. Yeah. I think that your line is bad. Um, he said he can he, he doesn't, he's not ready to uh, give an opinion right now. Okay, that's fine. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Paul. Is it there? I want somebody from another older generation to give a view. Mr. Wherever. Um, hello. 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 Yeah. Hi, good evening. Welcome to the show. <laughs> 
Thank you. Yeah. Did you hear um, my question? I think so. Yes. Yes. So, um, what I, do you think? Yeah, do. Dignity of, I will look at it from the other side. I will look at it from um, another eye, not, not on how you, the person, feels about the job, but how other people should uh, look at any job or anybody given any service. Mm. That is appreciating any service, any job being done by anybody. That's how I see the dignity there. That's mm. if cleaner when I work, I have to appreciate you and appreciate the work you do, mm. no matter my position. Mm. So even, even if I'm not enjoying the job, I think by you appreciating it will increase my you know, joy mm. for that job. I don't know if I answered. I think, Bami, what, um, what you're saying is that the, the appreciation from the people you're serving, from your customers, could give mm -hmm. you that job satisfaction, right? We'll add to it, yes. Just a long time. Yeah. All right, so generally the question is, do you agree that the jobs we do gives us that sense of purpose? Or do you believe, agree, or believe, or agree that it is a tedious necessity? Uh, no, I don't get it. It, 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 can be, it can be general when you say the job we do. The job some people do may not, but the one some people do might be. So it depends. It depends on where um, anybody finds themselves. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, any more hello. thoughts on this before we go to hello. the next question? Yeah, hello. Yeah, Uncle Benson, are you there? Yeah, well, I think um, oh, it's a two is a two way thing. Is a two way thing. Just like uh, when I was still in when I was still in Nigeria, I think I found uh, a lot of job satisfaction from what I do because I worked I worked with the blood service then, and uh, when I see when I see people saved via blood that people donated, I felt that. My all my efforts are not in vain because those days I can I can be on the road 11 p.m. 12 midnight coming back to the center with even if it's 50 units of blood and we are happy coming back that at least the blood we we got today is going to save other people's life but the other way around sometimes it's not about the satisfaction it's about paying the bills. Just yes. like the last, just like the last speaker said, especially it's done here in America so much that uh, whatever job you do, and they give you tips, they always believe in tipping people. They are telling you they appreciate what you are doing. I may not be able to do this, but you are doing it for me. Have this. So I think it's a two-way thing: the satisfaction area and just for the necessity area, paying the bills. <sighs> Okay, thank you. Um, I, let me give my own view on that statement. I think from experience, it switches. At some point, we feel it gives us that sense of purpose. Again, on a higher percentage, it does give me a sense of purpose, knowing that I have to do that work to get paid, to sustain my family or do the things I need to do. So it gives that sense of purpose for me. Um, sometimes it feels tedious. And I think, anyway, let's crack on because of this. And again, it's at, at the back of experiences at work. That's why our perception change. Uh, let's go to the second question, IJ. All right, hi everybody. Welcome to the show again. The second question is, um, are you also of the opinion that societal influence, which is like the peer, the age, the region negatively affects career decisions? Like I remember when we were growing up in Nigeria, everybody wanted to be a doctor, lawyer, or whatever. So, um, Ferdinand, I can know. Are you there? Ferdinand, are you there? Uh, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. But I'm, I'm at a noisy place. Oh, you're a noisy my... place. Okay. Um, but... Chibuzo Paul, are you here? I know you. You logged in as IMSU um, Global Convention. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good evening. Good evening. Sorry for Hi, coming in late. 
No, that's fine. That's fine. I'm, I'm trying to rename. Can you assist me? Rename, yeah, I'll rename. Uh, I'll rename you. Yeah, I'll rename okay, you. Please. But while I'm trying to rename you, are you also of the opinion that societal influence, which is like the peer age region, negatively affects career decisions? Yes, I totally agree. I totally agree. Can you explain? It affects so, so, um, It's not just age. Age affects. Uh, socioeconomic status affects, social cultural status affects, uh, influence also affects. Uh, possibly, uh, when we were growing up, there were some careers that were tagged as expensive. For example, while growing up, if somebody said, I want to read medicine and surgery, mm. we already have in our head that it's an expensive course to read. Yeah. Probably with the probably with the, 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 the things we've had, mm. possibly also because of the number of age, the number of uh, years, sorry, yeah. the number of years it takes to complete those courses. Yeah. So that, that aspect also can influence one. Mm -hmm. And that is why you see, you, see, you, you see that a lot of the rich kids, mm. a lot of the rich kids then while growing up always went for uh, medicine and surgery, mm. law and the rest of them. Yeah, and I, I think it still it still happens to this present time. Yeah, that the the only advantage is that there's a decline. Yeah, there's a decline in how people see it. The the big marrying, the big marrying of the cost. Yeah. there's a little decline. But it has not completely left. Yeah. it's just a little shift. People yeah. are now more aware. Uh, even the, the the children of the poor can actually want their kids to study medicine and surgery. All they need to do is just to go extra mile in terms of funding and the rest of them. Yes. Influence also helps. Take, for example, uh, Barista uh, Afe Babalola, the man that has Afe Babalola University. If you watch most of, if I, all, his, all his kids, if I'm not mistaken, they're all lawyers. Oh, wow. They're all lawyers. And you, can, you will see that uh, with the way they were brought up, they, their dad they has a lot of influence on them. Yeah. They have a lot of influence on them. So you can see that without influence their dad has on them, they all wanted to follow their dad's um, footsteps. Yeah. So I, I totally agree with you that it influences age, yeah. socioeconomic status, age, socioeconomic status, sociocultural status, mm -hmm. uh, can, also, can also influence. So I totally agree with you. Thank you. And to piggyback on what you said, I think, um, the Nigerian system, uh, education system makes it difficult too for um, people to get into some certain courses. They, they put cut off yeah. so much cut off points on you know on certain courses that even when somebody's a, stu a good student, not everybody's a good test taker. Do you understand? They can't get into that course because of these cut off points. Unlike here, all you have to do is make the grades, and you can. Yeah. The only thing uh, those cut off points in uh, here would do for you is like a certain school, but would you go into the course you want to do and do it in you know, like a smaller college? Yes, you can, yeah. So um, thank you so much. Ufuma, are you there? Ufuma, Ufuma. Ufuma, can you talk? No, his English name. Repet. Don't mind, OJ. She's the one that muted me. Oh, she muted. Don't, don't mind people, wickedness, your village people. Mm -hmm. No, I think I was engaged in some domestic conversation okay. and then she muted me. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, are you able to talk now? I have not even caught a proper grasp of the topics. Okay, we're talking about uh, dignity of labor. And the question goes like this Are you also of the opinion that societal influence, such as age, peer, and region, negatively affects career decisions? Definitely. And I think, um, well, the ones who, who suffered that the most as in our generation, but I think we have more liberal parents these days who are giving that children yes, better exactly. choices. So I think societal pressure used to be much more before now, but I think it's getting to be on the decline. And oh. okay, I can tell you my own personal experience. I had a son who was in Ukraine when this war started studying medicine. Mm. Right now, we've had to relocate him. He went to Hungary, Austria, he's in Switzerland now, and all that. But of late, he's been telling me that, look, that it was all this crazy about studying medicine. He wants to do computer engineering instead. And I'm telling him, it's your life, my young man. If yeah. that's what you think you want to do, 
But I can't imagine in our time, say we would have had a kind of conversation with our parents. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they not so, born you well. <laughs> I tried to convince my daughter too, but she had the same thing too. She went into college trying to do medicine. Um, Halfway first semester, she said she wants to go to a uh, business. Um, so, like I tried to convince her because all her life she's what, been talking what, about being a doctor and stuff like that. But she said, is that okay? I don't know whether for some of you, you're the first set of graduates in your family. Mm. I was like in second generation of graduates in my own family. Mm. And so we didn't have a lot of uncles and plenty of people like that who were that well read to be able to advise us. But I think mm. in our generation, we I have a lot of uncles who pass through the educational system mm. and the way we understand the dynamics. They may have had colleagues and classmates oh. and classmates in university who did longer years because they were studying courses that they didn't really like, but were forced on them by their parents. Yes. So our sense of understanding of the challenges that children face yes. within this process now is better, uh, probably more balanced than our parents had. Yeah. So I think with time, some of these things will wear out. Um, yeah. The of pressures for me eventually will decline. And then some of these things that we're facing now as um, cultural challenges mm. will evolve with time. And then the mm. boy won't be so overbearing on career choices and all that. That's my take. Thank you so much. I, I just, um, please, can I add? Oh, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Something you said I just remembered. You, you know, you spoke about yeah. even the schools, the educational system also affects. It makes it difficult in Nigeria. And, yeah. Yeah, in Nigeria. And it's also, the trend is also, is on, is on the eye, is on the eye rise now. Yeah. The trend. A situation where somebody applies for medicine, for example, and you are telling the person to come and take education chemistry. That's too exactly. unacceptable. It kills your morale. Yeah, it makes you feel you're not good enough person, to do that. Yes. yes, if the person is not eligible, it's not eligible. Exactly. It's as as that. If it's not yes. eligible, it's not eligible. You can't tell somebody who is not up to the cutoff to come and study another course mm. just because you want. And you see those. That's why you see some of those departments are too crowded. <laughs> yeah, they are too crowded. Well, you well, see so many. So many students doing what they are not even... For myself, I read education chemistry mm -hmm. as a course. But what I applied for was, was biochemistry. So at the end of the day, what did I do with the education chemistry? Nothing. I came out of the university and started working in the bank. Everybody goes in the bank in Nigeria, yeah. In Nigeria. <laughs> exactly. I'm sure I would have been in the banking industry if I was in Nigeria. If I was in Nigeria. Yeah. Can, I, can, I, can I say something on this one? Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Can you check it? That even goes on to side that pressure, and I think that's why I didn't address that issue when I was talking. Yeah, so I agree with you. Why not get students in the department? If you don't divert people from other faculties or departments into them, because I just don't um, think yeah. end up reading industrial chemistry when they apply to read engineering, so yes. end up reading um, microbiology when they apply to read medicine. Because if you check, Maybe when people are filling jam forms in Nigeria, for instance, nobody applies to such departments. So it's up to universities to divert students yeah. at the end of it to fill those departments. But then I'm sure it will get, it will get better. Yeah. But I think they have to. Um, I heard they're trying to make it easy for kids to go into colleges because some kids end up spending like two, three years trying to get into colleges. It shouldn't be like exactly. that. It shouldn't be it's so. It shouldn't be so. I and when you ask some kids, how's your jam? They say, no, this was my first attempt. Yeah. Why are you supposed to have more than one attempt in the first place? I'm telling you, it's, you know, here, yeah, all you need to do is just go into any college and unless you want to go into this big Ivy League, you know what I mean? But here, all you have to do is go to the department you want and register. You start taking your classes. Pian, 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 anyhow you want to take it. If you want to do it in I, 10 I, years, you do, you do it in five years, you do it. Can yeah. I say something? Yeah. Um, you know what, right? Give you going back to that question. When even when they make that choices because they don't have another option, right? When it when the chips are down, you're out of college, you're now looking for a job to do. Choosing what to do at that time, it's now a problem. Possibly if you if maybe your parents want you to go and learn trade or learn some kind of craft, I'm telling you anything, but you think, oh, my friends are in university or my friends has gotten a job, have gotten a job in, a, in an office. That's the peer, that's the peer pressure. Do yes. Yeah, exactly, yeah. So, and again, in terms of region, in UK, 
you can use it as an example in the whatever what 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 I don't know what they call us here anyway. People could do the cleaning job with pride and send that money back to Africa, back to their um, families and sustain them. But in Nigeria, it's difficult. But recently, I heard um, one of my friends in Nigeria told me she opened a cleaning factory. I said, great. And they're looking for staff. They don't know they have too much staff. People applying to do those cleaning jobs, clean offices. I said, that's a good thing. These are things that were not very... Yeah, they will think, why would I do cleaning? Why would, I'm a graduate, I wouldn't do cleaning. But again, if that's what the job out the job out there, and that will make your ends meet, why but not? Mama, think about it. When we were growing up, they had companies and everything. Who was doing the cleaning? I know schools, the students used to sweep the, uh, the classes and everything. But the yes. offices, I'm sure yeah. they had cleaners then, just that we didn't know who they were. Who cleaned it? Yeah, it wasn't it wasn't our focus. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. The good thing is that they have so many businesses now in Nigeria, so many private small businesses, you know. So many uh, ways. Fast fast food chains. Fast food chains. And those places are being cleaned every five minutes because people throw things on the floor. So I think um the cleaning business is going well. All right. Thank you, everybody. Yeah. Um Bobby, can you talk? Betsy, do you want to say something? Yeah, I think uh, on, on the issue of that, uh, the way they, uh, we get these admissions, sometimes the problem is you don't know how long the person has stayed. Okay, like for me, for instance, my first jump, I applied for petrochemical engineering. But when I wrote jamba, I had 245, and they said the cutoff was 260 or what. So that year, I couldn't enter the university. I applied for the second time because that, I think then there, there was not this issue of, okay, if you can't eat this, let's push you there or whatever. I, I don't wow. understand. But So I did the second jam, applied the same petrochemical engineering. I got two, the same two for the something and the cutoff. So I now swapped. I now left entirely the science area I left the science area and applied, not wrote the third jam to read marketing and I got my admission. So sometimes it's not the problem of uh, the school, it's the problem of us. Ah, all my mates are in the university. I must take any, I must take any course and join them in the university. That's just basically where the problem is. Because if you tell me to go and read something, I think, I might not be able to function with. I would not accept it. I will not go, but the pressure is, is, I think it's like a peer pressure. All my mates that are in the university doing third year, I've not even entered the university and uh, I can't even stand in their midst to discuss. There are certain things they will be saying that I can't even contribute to because you are not yet in the university. That's why you see some of us end up taking all those courses, not that they wanted to read those courses. Yeah. Because they, because their friends, they are, yeah, their friends are already year one, year two, third year in the university and are still writing jam. So like you said, like like you said, the, I think the best thing would have been to take out to take out jam from Nigerian university, let people apply to the courses they want to read. Then when you go into those courses and you see that you are not good in that area, then you leave and do something else. But you see this issue of jam in Nigeria will keep it should be scrapped. It. Yeah, jam should be scrapped. I, I totally, I totally agree. Yeah, totally if you agree. have, jam. if you have the like the GCE and YEC, you know what I mean. Yes. Yeah. Jam go should be for competitive schools. Maybe you want to enter to certain schools and they are struggling to get. You know what I mean, but. If you have the because you have people who have their some people are some people like here they know not everybody tests very well not everybody's a good tester you can be very good in your academic but you can't test well because you go to exams you have anxiousness and you know what I mean so you can't test well so they can't use it to judge people they mess up people a lot all right thank you everybody we have a special guest today by the name of Chuk Swaman Junior he's an um, aviation. He's an aviation engineer and coach. So, um, Junior, are you there? 
Chooks Junior, are you there? Chooks. Yes, sorry. Yes, yes. All I right. I so I just introduced you. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself, what you do, and you know? Okay. Uh, can you see? Video. Can we get video on Chooks, please? Chooks, okay. you're a special guest. They give us video now. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Let me... <laughs> Okay, sorry guys, thank you very much. Hold on one second. Oh, I think I just muted you, I'm so sorry. Your iPhone, right? Uh, hello. Um, yeah. Hi everyone. Hi, how are you? Hi, um, so Hi, yeah, thanks know. for, hello, so thanks for the opportunity. I really appreciate um, um, obviously being brought on here. Um, so my name is Trux Obi Moma. I'm an aviation engineer. I've been working in the, in the aviation industry in the UK for um, about six years or more now. Um, I've worked both with civil clients and the military as well. Um, so I was working at um, RAF Bryce Norton supporting the, the UK Royal Air Force on their A400 and fleet. And I've worked for Airbus helicopters as well. Um, so... Working in the industry, um, one thing you uh, you notice very early on is that there isn't a, a lot of um, like diversity. So I've worked in companies where I've come across I'm just the only black person in the company. Okay, and I don't feel like um, yeah, I don't feel like is is maybe because maybe younger people from you know ethnic backgrounds don't know to aspire for these sort of roles and jobs. I feel like because there isn't enough representation. So if kids who are growing up can't see um, someone who looks like them doing a particular role, they don't think to exactly. aspire for those sort of roles. You also see it in, um, like when you go to um, airports, the pilots you see, usually they're never from ethnic minorities. You understand? Mm -hmm. But it's like, and I feel like um, this has gone on for years. And I feel like this is a conversation that we should be having as a community to encourage our kids. Like, do you want to be um, an aircraft engineer? Yes, you can. You know, do you want to be an astronaut? Yes, you can. Do you want to be um, a physicist? Yes, you can. Because these are careers that young people from ethnic minority would never dream about. OK, yes. so I've, I've, I've gotten the opportunity to speak at different career events. And, you know, when you speak to young people, they seem very interested. You, you talk to parents who are like, oh, my gosh, um, you know, my, my child loves planes. Um, how do they get into aerospace engineering? What courses do they have to do? And um, so speaking at this career event, it gave me the initiative to actually start um, my own program. So I run a, a career mentoring program right now that encourages young people from the ages of 13 up to 25 to aspire, for, to aspire for careers in um, aerospace and aviation engineering. And um, the way the program is, is structured is that we coach them um, on a nine month program. So we coach them and tell them to what the industry requires. So if it's them either going towards university or looking for work experience or apprenticeships, because there are different mm -hmm. ways to go into the industry. And there's, aviation is so big that, for example, if you look at a plane, a plane is so big, one person can't do it. It's sectionalized, okay? Mm -hmm. So you have to pick an area and then specialize in that. So if you want to do the propulsion system, you work on the engines, you have the wings of the plane, you can work, work on that, you have the structures, and you have engineers that look at fatigue so there's so much but you know it is so exciting because i think growing up everyone was excited by birds when a bird is flying you're like oh you know you want to you just you're just fascinated by how birds work and i think i, I don't know for you guys but when i was um, a lot younger whenever i see a plane flying i always look up you know it's always yeah. exciting so that is always a good avenue to get kids into an industry especially if it can excite them Yes. So the program is designed to obviously keep it very engaged. And we have models, model aircraft that we bring in. Um, we, we sat down with some industry leaders, um, like um, actual maintenance um, organizations, aircraft maintenance organizations who are happy to take on young people and give them apprenticeships and work experience. So when they're done with their university or whatever it is they're doing, if they approach, you know, companies for, for work, they can say, We've gone through the Apex Aviators program. This is what we've done. And even, even during an, an interview um, scenario, they can 
demonstrate basic knowledge because when an employer is talking to you, if you can um, show to them that you have like the basic knowledge of the industry, okay, and someone else who's come for the same interview doesn't have quite as much, um, obviously, um, basic knowledge, you get the advantage, okay? Yeah. So I'm just trying to um, obviously play my part in this yeah. <laughs> during the time I'm here because I've, I've, I've worked, um, I mean, I started my career in about two, two, um, 2017 and I've been blessed to actually go around the industry and, and see so much, you know, it's not, it, it's not easy to get into like this, you know, places. So I've always thought about how do I, how do I give back? Because I know that when I speak to parents and there's a lot of people, young people who are interested in things like this, even the ones who are not interested in them, mm -hmm. expose them to it and let them make an informed decision because um whenever I come across people and they ask me oh what do I do and I say I'm an aircraft engineer it's always like oh that's amazing I'm like yeah, of course yes yes it is amazing but it's like it's not I don't want it to be something that is um that sees that it, it's so perfect mm -hmm. yes because we have to now start telling our young people listen if you want to do this this is how you go about it and the program as well um, we're going to be bringing a lot of industry people who are actually um, working, obviously, right now, and they can tell the young people about their journeys, how they got into the industry, what their day to day in the industry looks like. So this gives exposure and, you know, just mentors them towards that, um, mm -hmm. towards career in aerospace and aviation. So, yes, thank you. That's it. I don't know. I'll take any questions. They want to have any questions. Right. I, know I've, I know I've had. Thank you so much, but I'm we, 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 as Oche Kitchen, we are mad at you. We've not seen you here before, so next oh. week you better bring all your young friends and all of you uh. come, boys and girls, all of you come. Can I, and then we'll ask schedule you a proper special. one hour. We have to schedule like a workshop show for you so that you can mentor, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, yeah. Can yeah, I ask you the first absolutely. question? I, oh, yeah, I yeah, yeah, me. I want to see you next week. I have okay. a question for him. Okay. Mama, what question do you want to ask? The one you've been asking him since you guys were, were little is not enough. It's all just time. <laughs> you didn't ask him all the while you were talking and all over the place. Now that it's my turn to ask questions, I want to ask him something. GJ are there. True. Hey. <laughs> I, I love, I love, I, I love what's next. I love, I get, I get, uh, please, I love the boss moves. I get, please mute uh, Nena, you're permanently. I'll mute her. Her mouth is too much. Now, OJ's OJ's it's good to have you here. Oh, uh, thank you. The pleasure is mine. And um, when you were talking, my mind started traveling, you know, and I, I must tell you that I'm impressed. Oh, that thank you. you. To tow that line and that. The fact that you are representing all of us, because yes. if I see someone like you at the airport, I'll make sure everybody knows I know you. Of course, um. <laughs> so I'll take selfie. I'll, you know. So that's to show you how proud of you we are. Oh, okay. thank you very much. So has thank this you. always been your choice? Have you always um, wanted to do that? Yeah, um, since I was little, I've I've been passionate about playing. Oh, yeah. um, it it oh, just started oh. innocently. So it's like a dream come true for you. Yes, yes, this is the industry I've always wanted to work in. Really nice. I want to go into coaching, yeah. It's a dream yeah. come true for me. Because yeah. um, growing up, I wanted to be a lawyer. Yeah. And I still want to be a lawyer. For real? Yes. Still want to? It's a dream that, you know, anytime I think about it, it gets me very emotional. So I don't like talking about it. Oh. How I found myself in a science class is an entirely different kettle of fish. Just take um, oh. just take online classes, one one class at a time before yeah. you need to finish. Like, um, See, like Kim Kardashian is a lawyer. Kim Kardashian is a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> so if she can do it, she can do it. <laughs> okay. So since you did this, and um, since it is what you have always wanted, what was the one thing you did to make sure you achieved this dream? Um. I feel like uh, it, it's consistency. You just have to set to your you have you have to set your mind on the goal and execute. You know, it mm -hmm. doesn't matter the noise around because there will be a lot of noise. Because I can tell you now, my time through university was was hell. Ask my <laughs> you can ask uh, uh, my sister. Um, mm -hmm. I repeated university twice, so my course is meant to be a three year course. This is what this is actually this what shows that. You know, sometimes um, 
university wouldn't always um just because okay let's say people you have people who finish university and they come out with a first mm-hmm. but those people are difficult to work with so they're not very successful in exactly. a working environment yeah. okay mm-hmm. i had a very difficult time at university a three-year course i did it in five because i there was some i had some issues i, I repeated too Were you so watching? When, huh no i, I don't Were party, party? No, I, I don't yeah no, no, i don't party mm-hmm. i don't, I don't <laughs> you gotta you can ask my sister, I don't party. So but um so when when that happened, it's almost like you have that self-doubt, you know, you start to doubt yourself, you start asking yourself, Am I good enough? Because mm-hmm. I'm someone I, I, I am so scared of failure. I push myself, sometimes I push myself a bit too much, which I've come to learn with experience. To but um the, the important thing is to is to just keep going. Yes. And one day you will look back and just realize that you've come so far. Yes. So yeah, perseverance. Well thank done. You. Well done. Oh, well done. You. Like I said earlier, we are super proud of you. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you very well, much. Oja, so, Oja, you stole my question. You stole the question I wanted to ask my brother. Oh, mama, Oja, 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 I'm going to tell you out of this. I'm going to throw you out of this. You know, I'm so room. proud Don't of you. Quiet. <laughs> oh, yeah, you brother, really your shop he, he's our brother. He's our chicken brother. Okay. Yes, <laughs> our, little, brother. our little brother. Our little brother. Oh yeah. Brother. <laughs> and now I'm gonna be telling people. Oh, my brother is. <laughs> <laughs> um, after so... after Ik is a Bini, after a Bini is junior. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, and then in that um on that note, I'm going to ask other people. What is that career choice you wished you made earlier? And what did you do differently? So I would ask Bobby. She's making pepper soup for me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she can talk from the kitchen. Now, people put phone calls on their ears while cooking, and they spend one hour talking. Bobby, are you there? Or I'm going to make you put too much salt. OK, maybe I'll ask Joyful Praise. Hello, hello. I... I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Okay, what was Bobby. the question again? <laughs> Bobby, I said, what is that career choice you wished you made earlier? And what did you do differently? As a young girl growing up, my mm-hmm. first career choice was to be a lawyer. Oh, wow. Aww. Oh, yeah. You're not far from it. Liars. Hold on. Liars hold on. So I was to be a lawyer. Are you what saying that Kaiser was a liar? No, my dad was different. Eh, OK. <laughs> Continue, Bobby. So when I couldn't get the jam score, and eventually I found myself here in America, of course, society, the pressure to go into the nursing field, to be candid with you. Yeah. I never, I never fulfilled my career goals. For all these years, I've been in this nursing career. I still felt, I still felt that something was missing in me. Mm-hmm. Until, recent, until recently, my best friend's brother got sick to the extent that they weren't sure what's going to happen to him. Mm-mm. Ethically, I'm not supposed to do what I did, but I did it. Simple thing that I did. The change was tremendously dissatisfaction mm-hmm. wow. was fulfilled. That was the first time. <laughs> that you got that, 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 you got that um, satisfaction. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It wasn't as if I did anything more, but simple prescription. Change it all. That was the first time I feel satisfied. Oh, well done. And, Bobby. and recently, well done, Bobby. recently. And just to let you guys know, uh, Bobby's doctor in um, she's a psych nurse doctor, so she's Doctor Bobby. Come on now. Well done, so, doc. So, hold on. Shout it out. Toot your horn. Toot beep beep. So hold on one second. There's a twist. A twist to this now. So I have this girl that I consider as a family, right? It's just a distant friend that the family is going through crisis. Mm-hmm. So I jump in to help. What I'm seeing 
it's more than I bargained. Professionally, I've seen this, but again, it's so close to home this time around. Remember, this is somebody, this is a distant friend. Mm -hmm. Getting inside the family, I feel so emotionally drained that I wished I didn't volunteer to do this. But again, somebody has to do it. Yes. You see, so these are the, this happened less than a month ago. I've been like, I've been in a nursing career for more than 16 years. And yes. this is the first time I feel fulfilled that this could be a calling. <laughs> That's my take on this. I hope I, I answered your question. Thank you. Yes, yes, you do. Well done, well done, Bobby. Thank you, well done. Inspiring. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I was going to ask myself. There's a guest here who is myself. Myself, please, can you take the question from me? And what's your real name, myself? So let me um, change your name. <laughs> myself, guest. Myself is um, close to her device. Do you want me to come on now? Yes, please, Joyful Praise. Go ahead. Hello, everyone. Hi, Joyful Praise. Hey. Welcome to the show. Hello. Good to have you again. <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. So, growing up. Of your hair. When you're growing up, you want to be everything. At a junction, I wanted to be a doctor. Then I thought of blood and injection. I'm one person, when you want to give injection, you're going to have to really go through a lot of stress to give me injections. I said, no, 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 I'm not doing that. Again, and having to look up to somebody in my family, a mentor, uh, my mother's um, elder sister, she's a successful accountant. So I'm like, okay, let me go for accounting. And then again, I thought about it, I'm like, hmm, I'll be carrying paper up and down, be doing- You don't know math, you don't know math. I love math. <laughs> That was why she encouraged me because up till now, even I support my kids to do math. So I love math from day one. So I've always loved math. So that was one reason she said I should do it. But at the point again, I said, I'm not doing it. Eventually I had to go for um, another study, business management and um, marketing because she said, you can talk. So you go and do the talking at work. So at the end, I finished that and I'm like, okay, no. And then I went into HR and then I, I, love I, I, I didn't get the fulfillment. I said, no, it's not for me. I'm not going to be sitting down there and just be doing what I want. Mm -hmm. I know there's a different aspect of HR, but it was just not for me. So I left that again into housing management. And then I kind of like, oh. And the way I went into housing management was not something I really want. It was like, I saw a job, I'm like, oh, I just applied for it. And then I went, I got it. And since then I've kind of been enjoying housing management and it's really fun to sometimes, oh, sometimes we can have some crazy um, uh, customers, crazy tenant, but it's worth it. And then I, I kind of moved from there again into music it's okay, let me study music. So I went to study music and, and then the calling came upon my life to become a music, a gospel uh, music uh, minister. And again, I think this is where I found my calling. I love it so much, reaching out to people because during the course of ministering to people, you'll find people that are going through what you have gone through in the past, so you are able to relate with them, not like you think is something, you think this is how it should be, but you will relate with them. So this music ministry where I am now, I would say this is where I am fulfilled more because I can relate with everyone that comes across with me. And then during the music ministry, I discovered that I could do different programs. So I have Never Give Up, I have A Will Exode, I have uh, Reflection Time. So and then recently, last year, I, I just branched into moderating for people, MC, wedding, and everything. Me too. <laughs> it's superb to see that 
you the more yeah. you get older, you there are some things you never yes. know. He's there for you going yeah. into it. Now I tell you, I do since morning I woke up, I've done more than four moderation and uh, moderator on different Zoom meeting. Tomorrow again, I'm on, on it. And I find fulfillment in it. I'm smiling. I'm able to combine that with my music ministry, with the word of God, with things that I've gone through in life. I'm able to kind of put everything together. So everything is Hallelujah. together. Even in my experience as housing manager is coming together. My experience as a property manager is coming together. Everything that I've done, is not coming together as a whole. So sometimes you'll go, you'll do something today, and then you do another one tomorrow. You do it. It's like a puzzle. You might not know, but at the end, everything comes together. Then yeah, you yeah. work with all those things. So it, it's been my journey, and I'm, to be honest, I'll enjoy it. Maybe tomorrow now, if you say, I'm going to learn how to become a nurse. <laughs> <laughs> Since you know oh, math now, your prejudices, your prejudices don't set. <laughs> yeah, but to be honest, to be honest, whatever we do in life is not a mistake. Everything adds up at the end of the yeah. day. As uh, as Bobby said, now she did it. She got it, but the time came that became useful. Yes. Everything we do in life. One way or the other, it comes back to become useful to us. So, and to be honest, I was saying to somebody today, we never stop learning. The day was the day was to die. So, I don't want to stop learning. So, whatever my mind set on to do, I just push myself to do it and just see how God. I was telling, I, was it then I was saying to, um, I meant that I was going to go for masters in in public relation, and it's because it's not in line. It's not happened. It's not happened because it's not something that I want to do, but mm. something else. It just can likes to. Yeah, something else can spring up. And I just recently have applied for counseling to become mm. a professional counselor. So yeah. it's something, everything has to come together because I'm appealing to everyone, your experience in life, everything you've gone through in life, somebody needs that. Mm. We are all and, 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 joyful praise, joyful praise, just before you finish, the, some of the things you've mentioned, like um, the gospel artist side to things or gospel music, and I know you enjoy that. I know you do a lot of that. Does that bring money or do you do it as a hobby? Initially, I was doing it as an hobby, but as time goes on, when people begin to know you, the money will start coming in. So it becomes oh, a job. Yeah, okay. you, initially you come, you might do it as a ministry, you might do it as a hobby, but with time, as people begin to know you, like you know me, I used to travel a lot, but because of this pandemic, I put embargo on all or anything, any ministration outside the UK, I'm not doing. Uh, am yeah. I, I love my life, I don't want to go anywhere, I'm not going, but before the pandemic, yeah. I used to travel. There was a day you saw me drag suitcase into the office because. I went for administration yes, from yes. office. I went on a Friday. On Monday, I was dragging my suitcase right into the office and I kept it by my side to work. And then after work, mm. I drive back home. So it's like that. But yes, um, initially when you start it, it's like an hobby or something. But as time goes on, the money will just start coming and people will invite you like to all, everything I've done today, they're going to pay me. So it just comes on and then they will pay you the money. That's beautiful. Yeah. Well done. Thank you, Joyce and Chris, for your contribution. And Mama, before I go back to you, may I yeah. kindly ask my baby brother this question? Ike. Mr. Mr. Lee, Mr. Ike Lee. Okay, okay Ike Lee. <laughs> what is that career choice you wished you made earlier? And what did you do differently? I know that you studied library and information science. I did not see you practice anything in that line for one day. Not even Mother, will you shut day. up and let us speak? I can carry on. You <laughs> sleep outside. Today. Sorry, my wife is laughing at me from the background. I heard her voice. Hello, good evening, Ike. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome to the show, bro. Starting from your father. And then in my case, or your case is different. 
if you mama, you look exceptionally beautiful today. Thank you. I've been attending events today. I cannot, I cannot give up the kitchen for any event. That's why I had to be oh, okay. here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank so, you. Um, my own case was different. I wanted to do mechanical engineering. And uh, when we got to a part where we have to switch from arts to science, I followed my friend and went to arts class. When I got to that place, they said, don't worry, social sciences, you do it. Now we went to science the first day. Father Mass chased us back to us and went back. So we started from there. When I got to SS3, took my egg, said, okay, oh, let me go and do law now. I got to Nikau, law. My father said, no, this boy, you are very difficult. You cannot do law. I will go and get your admission in this. I think you are going to get my admission in this. Okay. I will not go. I will only go into the classroom. He said, okay. You know, my father went and got that admission. Paid acceptance fees, paid school fees. I only walked into the classroom. Oh, wow. So, I did library and information science. Finished. Here, my idea for mechanic work. I never practiced for one day. See, when I was studying library and information science, I was selling cars, I was repairing cars. Because um, that's where your passion lies. Yeah. Africa. He loves cars. That's what he posts every day on his status. I got to Abuja, tried to work, it didn't work. I just told myself, there's no need to deceive yourself one day. Forgive me. You're going to be a mechanic. I have to open my own auto shop. So I run my own auto shop now. That's beautiful. So well done. I don't have anything to do with what I studied, but just my passion. That's beautiful. Have you ever thought about um like getting a franchise, like an um, AutoZone franchise or something? I heard that in Nigeria. Yeah, Where you have the well, food well, diagnostic well, thing. Well, you, know, you know, whenever the elections come, we, we all pause and yeah. move for something. After okay. the elections, so a lot of business people, a lot of entrepreneurs have really stopped investing in their business. They're holding on to the elections will be. Yeah. So after the elections, uh, we're looking at some collaborations and change of sites. Yeah. So we move from where we are presently to a bigger place. Uh, we we'll do some collaborations with some companies and see what we can. Okay, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Like, like for me, knowing not, not what I know now, I wouldn't even bother. I would have been an event planner, DJ, and MC. That's that's. I love those things. So, but you're still you're still one. You're an event planner. You're a DJ. Yeah, I do, but I don't. Make, yeah, like that's the, it. Gives me joy, you know, decorating and doing like, MC. Like and like Joyful Prince says, over time it will start time, giving yeah. you money. Yeah, it will start giving you money. I love those yeah. things. Okay. I, have a, I, I, have, I, I have I have a question for Ike Lee. Go ahead. Yeah, Ike, where 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 where? How did you then learn the mechanic, or people work for you? Now, so hmm. you can if you love something, you you find a way to learn it. Um, when we were growing up, my you know my father used to lease cars for all your companies when we were growing up, so. Every Saturday, um, when the cars come home for come back for repairs, I follow them to the mechanic workshop and I stay with them from morning to night. Wow. So 80% of my experiences came from when I was growing up. Yes. Like most of the things my boys would be running around to take care of. Mm. With my experience I got out back then as a child, I just had yeah. it and walked away. Mm -hmm. So it's not something I learned from people. It's something I have passion for that I've read over the years. Even most of the times, there are some things I see, even when I'm watching. It's a talent. It's a talent. I just Google and learn about the repairs mm -hmm. and how they can work. Mm -hmm. wow. It's not a talent. It's called Akaraka. Well done, um, that's wow. that, 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 that's, that's It is, because, because if you if you 
like not everybody can Google and watch. Many people want to sew their clothes, but they go watch videos, they can't do it. So, but you can just watch a video and figure out how to sew clothes. So yeah. Yeah, I you just I, have to I, develop, you just have to develop that talent. Yeah. I some people I, can I, see something and just you know fix it up. Some people can look and look and read labels and they can't do it. So it's, it's wonderful. Yeah. I think, okay. I think this, this is part of what the uh Yoruba mm. sometimes do that we the Igbos don't do. You see a Yoruba kid. He's in school, but when he comes back from school, he goes to learn a trade. Mm. He goes to learn a trade. I know, I know of a boy in Lagos. When I was in Lagos, I know of a boy in Lagos, a small boy. They had this generator, Jubali Bros. Yeah, Morocco generators wanted to fix, but you know that their engineers couldn't fix that generator. And Morapco is supposed to return back that generator to the company that brought it for repairs. And one of the guys just said, there is this boy at the corner, there is this boy at the corner of Ijesha, Ajorin, Ajorin Street, that the guy is a, a small boy, he opens his shop when he comes back from school and so on, that, I, that they think that the boy can fix that generator. Mm -hmm. their, engineers have, their engineers have tried fixing the generator and they couldn't. Mm -hmm. So they called this small boy, they called this small boy to fix the generator. They invited mm -hmm. him. The engineers were just looking at him, looking at the boy. Mm -hmm. So the boy just came, looked at the generator, you know, walked around the generator, looked for some, I don't know what he was looking for. So he took out something, did what he did on that, fixed it back, tried it, the generator came on, then he took it out again and told them they should buy this piece, that this piece is the problem of the generator. The Morocco, the Morocco man now said what they've been battling over for more than two weeks to fix. Mm -hmm. Just in a split second, the boy ratified the problem. So then I asked the boy and said, will you work with us? There and then they asked the boy because the boy was living on my street. Mm -hmm. They asked the boy, will you work with us? The boy said on a condition that this is little store will still be open anytime he's free. That this is little store will still be open. Mm -hmm. So I think that's one aspect of skills or trade we are missing that will just come out, we want to go to school, we face school. Not knowing that sometimes, mm -hmm. someday, that mm -hmm. skill we learn might be what we'll live on. No, what Igbos do is they do they, they, they finish college, go to London, do masters, come come back to Nigeria and learn how to sew clothes. <laughs> that, that is the thing that comes down. It takes or them time. Or, to they, you know, yeah. But they have to go yeah, to college. It takes them time right? to decide. And it's always when it's always getting late, that's when they decide to learn trade, when they cannot find that desired job. Yeah, and um, mm. anyway, we've come to the end of this show, but we'll still have a time if we have the time, and we'll go offline and the conversation will continue. We had a topic, but we don't have time to go through it. We want we would love to discuss the job, what they call the journey of the broke, J O B, and all this um, what's it called the um, pyramid schemes, the get well quick things, but we don't have that time to go through that now. And thank you very much, everyone, for being a part of today's show. Bottom line, let's enjoy what we are doing. Let's try and see what will work for us and do it. Let's not actually see or 90% of the time that what we're doing is a tedious, tedious um, necessity for us. It is killing. When you're in a job that you're not enjoying, it is difficult. If you don't have that job satisfaction, you will never be happy there. It might even drive you to death. So let's try and do things right. And let's again, try to focus. If we cannot get it this way, think of what else can we do that will work for us. Encourage the younger ones, Junior, thank you very much. Encourage the younger ones on their career path. And again, it must not all be white collar job. Life has shown that. A lot of people read courses or went to school to study things that will put them in that position. But today that's not what they are doing. Mm -hmm. Ike have just said it. Ike, Ike is not in any office. Ike is on the ground and doing things irrespective of what he studied. It's that passion and it's again, apart from passion, it's about talking people into it. If it's not a passion, I agree. You don't, it doesn't have to work. But sometimes people may open your eyes and make you understand and see 
what would help me sustain life. Thank you, everybody. And join us same time next week for another interesting topic. We're going offline, but the conversation continues. Love you all. Thank you, everybody. Love you.